<laughs> really filling in some pieces that sometimes are missing. we'll be interviewing people remotely and i'm like i'm like mm, this just like i'm like ooh, i love it and i forget that I'm jonah that jonah <laughs> jonah back to the guest yeah. <laughs> found that in a um, it's really ugly <laughs> it's you know this is what they use this is a mallet made of leather gavel. that's leather oh like what do you mash with it it's a mallet do you know what a mallet's used for murder <laughs> <laughs> so you know what a hammer is used for i have to yeah. stop laughing in, into the mic <laughs> <laughs> it's so disturbing for people a mallet to, to beat meat well, I guess you can have a food mallet, yes, but a yeah. mallet in general is is um it's like a it's not as it's not made with metal ever. Okay, it's not made to damage something. So it's like if you're oh, knocking two pieces of wood together, or okay. you need to lightly tap something right. into place. I didn't ever know that actually. But this is an old vintage one that's made out of um, rolled leather. leather. You <laughs> welcome learn to something the queer new creative. every day. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Queer Creative. My name is Jonah. And I'm Renessa. Hi, Renessa. It's so exciting to have you in my own home. Yes, we're here in Brooklyn, BK, New Do you York like today. My new apartment. Yeah, it's coming along really nicely. Coming it along, looks, it's done. It looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it, um, Right. No, it's beautiful. It's yeah, that's the that's love the, the new answer. couch. Thank you, thank you. you it's have all a beautiful. Fabulous dressing room. Yes, yes. Uh, my walk-in closet is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so uh, what have we been up to while you were here? Oh wow, we've been um, just bitching at each other all <laughs> fucking weekend, up in each other's shit, up in each other's faces. Um, uh, you blew up my bathroom this morning. Oh, that was not my <laughs> fault. You guys, I was just. So wait, you saw it. It was only watched, number one in there. We just watched SNL. I do. SNL I don't know. Sunday what, morning. Yep. SNL Sunday morning. There was just a sketch Halsey. on somebody. Literally just a sketch on TV of somebody of a bathroom Maxie. blowing up. <laughs> I am not on my period. Yeah, so she went pee and my toilet exploded. Exploded. And um, so that was fun. Yeah, we got that cleaned up. Um, so embarrassing. But, like, that all happened before we even had coffee. It can't take you anywhere. And I'll, she also ruined my rug last night by spilling soda all over it. I spilled it. seltzer water. <laughs> <laughs> what else? You we cooked, had great um, interviews. Yeah, we had great interviews. You cooked... Um, Stuffed shelves. Fabulous meal. And then we watched... I made you watch The L Word. I didn't make you watch it actually. It was your idea. And I was catching up on You episodes. were like, This show is so great, fucking lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> What's great about that show is I knew the lesbian I knew lesbian characters mm. that were exactly like the characters that are in you that were show. Like, this is like when I lived in LA. So LA LA yeah. lesbians. Yeah. I used to love going to lesbian nights when we lived there twenty years ago and it was so dramatic. The, the so lesbians are just as dramatic as gay men. I mean, if not more so, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's true, but... <laughs> <laughs> and I think gay men are um, can be a lot more the dramatic. Drama. Just look at well, lesbian Twitter and look at gay Twitter. Oh, that's They're so like two true. They're like true, because you were saying this weekend, the gay gay men are running like all the social media accounts for like big brands. <laughs> for like Wendy's and like McDonald's. And they just and... like argue with each other. Yeah, they just toss shade to constantly. Yeah. It's so fun to watch. I mean, like lesbians have better things to do. Like, come on. They're like having babies. It's They're... like, I look at Twitter, I think. CEOs. It... Yeah, driving near <laughs> power lesbian vehicles. What did they, remember back in the day, they all used to drive sub convertible. <laughs> Subs, yes. <laughs> My armpits are I sweating. I think that Porter actually <laughs> drove a sub convertible. <laughs> I remember I crashed a sub convertible. That's right. My, that was your my exit. Fat, fat X. Yeah, Fat, fat X. X used to drive um, power lesbian vehicles. Yeah, interesting. Um, but otherwise, we've been working on podcast stuff. Yeah. We've been working on like we got a lot strategizing done. and media kits. We're, yep, we're putting together a media kit, you guys. We're um, quickly coming on our first year uh, in a couple of months. Quickly, can you believe uh, it? Yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. 
We've done two seasons in one year. I'm excited. Yeah, we're so excited. We have, uh, yes, lots of stuff in store. Yeah, lots of secrets coming, uh, surprises coming for you guys. <laughs> um, some great content and some exciting yeah. like, collabos so, and guests. Oh my gosh, we're so we excited. We can't really release any information at this point, yes. but we've got some really big news coming yep. soon. Um, if you're watching us on video, you'll see this very colorful set going on today. We're repping Tyler Wallach. Yes. Studio t-shirts and oh, yeah. art in the background. Um, so that's that's our interview guest for today, which we'll talk about a little later. Yes. Uh, Tyler Wallach. He's fantastic. Um, but we do have a couple of um, community updates. Community updates. Community. Community. Yeah, that sounds right. Community. Q community. Community. Community updates. <laughs> we can cut all these out and you can find a good one. Yeah. Q community. And now it's time for. Uh, now it's time for. Community, community updates. updates. Um, thank you to Luca from Little Butchies in Boston for the queer Boston posters. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm holding it up for the YouTube uh, listeners, but. Um, Queer Boston. So that's the Sicko sign, which is like a landmark, an old landmark in in Boston. Um, this is by designer Christopher Versacas. So yeah, it's um, a great print. Little Butchies is a pop up opening their brick and mortar bar restaurant, sober safe space um, soon. And is it gay? Like LGBTQ? It's queer, yeah. It's queer. So I had lunch with Luca, um, one of the co-owners, a couple weekends ago and got those awesome posters and wanted to bring you a little piece of Boston over to Brooklyn, even though you don't care about us in Boston anymore. Um, I, but I really people don't. like people like Luca are, I think, helping make Boston cool again. So uh, do you remember? I remember uh, that sign used to be our uh, like uh, to Lansdowne Street where all the nightclubs yeah, are where like, we worked. It was like our like, beacon. Yep. Yep. Um Speaking of Speaking Luca, of did you there, did you have you seen the new show on Netflix? Um, it's a murder mystery about the ser the killer Luca, the gay killer. No. Oh my god, check it out! I can't think of the Is name it of it off the top of my head. Story? Yeah, yeah. And I remember following it when it was first released, and remember being like, "This guy is insane." He killed gay people. He was he killed one person. Oh. Live and like live streamed it, but he was like a model porn star. Oh my god! And then he, like, traveled I don't the world this. and he was like a complete scam artist. It's wild. Wow. You okay. Can what is it, it called? It. I forget. It doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> His name is Luca. His name is Luca. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, but we also want to uh, congratulate our former guest Robert Feisler. Uh, he received, or he was named the Columbia Journalism First Decade Alumni Winner for 2020. So shout out to Robert, Ward yeah, Bobby shout out on Robert. social media. And uh, we're also happy to hear that uh, Robert's niece, baby Autumn, is recovering beautifully. Um, and we send our love out to him and his family. Yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah. She, did you see the photo? I did. The baby's so cute. She was like she smiling. Was smiling and laughing. Yes. I so know. shout out to Bobby. Uh, speedy recovery. And we hope she gets home to you guys soon. And now it's time for a, a bisexual, bisexual break. break. Um, so I have one topic that I want to discuss today. Um, Bisexuals are wild. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you yes. know, it's uh, it's not breaking news by the time this comes out, but I wanted to talk about the Miss USA um, contestant that has come out as bisexual. She's apparently the first openly bisexual um, contestant to come out. And she has come out as both about her bisexuality as well as um, her bipolar diagnosis and like suicide attempts. Um, her name is Rachel Slauson. She's spilling all the tea, huh? She's I... like, I'm not only bisexual, I'm bipolar. Yeah, and I don't know. I haven't been following like her story. If if she came out on b both of those things at the same time, or if she had already been. Um, apparently, she was open on social media about her struggles with mental health. Um, her name is Rachel Slauson. I want to applaud her for both of those things because I yes. do think it's like important to erase the stigma and keep talking about. Um, Mental Both health. of those things, mental health and, you know, queerness. Um, a lot of people on Twitter 
would disagree with me <laughs> or do wow. disagree with me. Um, and I'm not super active on Twitter. Jonah is like all up in the Twitterverse. I'm learning, you guys. I'm learning. But I was into this story and I I actually wanted to see what you know what people were, were talking about. <laughs> um, and I was wild. reading a lot of things like, why do we need to know who she's sleeping with? Um, saying things like, why is the word queer used in the headline for this article? If she's bisexual, she's not queer. That's the wrong term. I always thought bisexual meant that someone was attracted to both sexes. Seems like the word queer in this context is a little bit damning in that respect. And also things like we're making heroes out of people because of who they've slept with and blah, blah, blah. Um, And while I definitely see like both sides of the coin in terms of why do we need to know? Why is it important to know about someone's sexuality? You know, I think like, yes, hopefully we get to that point in our culture where it's not important, but... I think the fact that people are still, uh, you know, that that our country and the world hasn't caught up yet with the current cultural definition of the word queer sort of says something and that we do need to keep talking about it. Also, Um, I couldn't talk about it for 20 fucking years, so you all can go fuck yourselves. Right, exactly. (laughs) Um, And I think... You know, the definition of the term queer, it's a continuing conversation for us on the podcast. Um, I personally see it as like an umbrella term for sexual and gender minorities who aren't, you know, hetero hetero or living like a heteronormative lifestyle or who aren't cisgender. Um, and I think that a lot of the world still sees it as, as an insult, which it once was, but... Um, I think it's important to keep talking about it. So I applaud her. What do you think, Yeah, Jonah? I applaud you. I think... I think I use the term in two different ways, and I fear defining it because I don't really think that I even have a clear Mm -hmm. definition of it for myself. But I do use it in two distinct different ways. I do use it as an umbrella term for the entire uh, alphabet soup that we have as um, queer people, but I also use it um, sometimes, like, I'll use it to refer to people, like... I it's queer to me is like very punk rock. It's very mm-hmm. um, indie, sort of like uh, out there. It's um, it's like sexual deviancy against the system. Yeah. Yes, like I know gay people that I wouldn't describe as queer necessarily, and I know straight right. people that I would describe as exactly. queer. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So you know, also it's like stop policing other people and the way they want to express themselves and, and define themselves. Yeah. Words. It's like, who fucking cares? Just, you know, whatever. Yeah. Keep it, keep it moving, people. I, yeah, I couldn't believe, like, w- what I was reading, but at the same time, I, I could believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's um, But also just want to note, she um, isn't the first out queer woman to compete, apparently in 2016, and Erin O'Flaherty um, was the first openly lesbian contestant to win a state title in the Miss America pageant. And then also Go in the off. 2019 Miss Universe pageant, um, Swayzen Het, I'm probably botching that name, um, was the first openly lesbian and contestant to compete, which was, you know, extraordinary because um, she was from Myanmar and where homosexuality is illegal. So applaud, applause to her. It'd be amazing if we had like a top three that was like bisexual, lesbian and like asexual <laughs> or like thing? intersex or oh, something oh for like pageants <laughs> all queer people yeah. and then other people in the comments are saying like who cares what her sexuality is Pe- beauty pageants are terrible and awful and like <laughs> they're you know yeah, they've got a point to you. yeah although I but... wouldn't mind being in a beauty pageant right yeah <laughs> <laughs> So that's so, that on that. Yeah, that's it for today. Also, well, if anybody else wants to chime in about the Please queer do. label discussion, I'm always interested to hear um, other people's thoughts on um, the word queer and how they define it. Yeah, please tweet at us. I wish comment. I remembered. We'll shout you out on the podcast. I really enjoyed John Cameron Mitchell's um, okay. definition of queer, which he used on RuPaul's podcast. Um, oh. What's What's the T? I think. Yeah. What's the mm-hmm. T? But yeah, I'm always interested in hearing how people define queer, and um, I think it's interesting. How they, yeah, how they define it, like what it what it means to you, how you associate with it. Like, totally. Yeah. So that's all I have for today's bisexual break. Bisexual break. So this weekend we got to do an interview in person together, which is always a treat. Um, we have the video of the interview up on YouTube, right in. Tyler Wallach's art studio. 
Yeah, so Tyler Wallach is a he's an artist first, um, <clears throat> but he does a lot of apparel and stuff. So yes. we were able to check out his studio in Dumbo. Yeah, and um, his oh. studio in Dumbo, um, he shares it with some other artists. It's a uh, it's an all queer queer artist queer creative studio. We met some cool photographers, and um, it happens to be queer. It's not. It's not mandatory. Strate- yeah, it just <laughs> it's happened. not mandatory. <laughs> it yeah. just happened to be that Wait. way. <laughs> but it was all, it was kind of cool that it was all like um, at the moment there were all gay men um, working there, three other artists. Well, um, but he shares a space yeah. with like, I think six or seven. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all queer men. Yes, it's a nice studio. <clears throat> no females in that office. No, well, we were there. I don't know. But, but it was cute. Yeah. But can I tell you a quick so, story about Dumbo? Yeah, <laughs> Dumbo. Like, I was in Dumbo two weeks ago with my Describe boyfriend. Describe what Theron. Dumbo is. like. To it's just a part of, it's like the first part of um, Brooklyn right over the bridge. Over okay, the Brooklyn so it's bridge. not the name of like a building. It's like a it's like a. I forget why the word, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's a story behind the word Dumbo. I don't remember. I'm sure I know it. I just forgot or whatever. So, uh, but Dumbo is, oh. Yeah, I rem- it's I, I know pieces of it, but I forget. So the uh, my boyfriend Darren and I were in Dumbo recently, like two weeks ago. Not even two weeks ago, like maybe the last weekend or something. And he got pulled into this like Instagram scam that was really funny. <laughs> so he emails me and he's like, "Hey, do you want to go to a luxury luxury spa? Here are the details." Blah blah. blah. All I saw was luxury spa, and I was like, "Reply, yes, of course I want to go. Mm-hmm. Send." And then come the day of, I started, I opened up the link finally and I was like, what is this thing? And it was all these Instagram photos of people like in these like rooms with like, you know, uh, velvet light, uh, oh, velvet, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, glow in the dark, like oh my gosh. lights yep. and lava lamps and like VR things. So I was like, what the hell is this? This um, does not look like a luxury spa. <laughs> not at all. They had this like, we when you first walk into an unmarked, sketchy unmarked door, oh you God. walk into this like room where it's, it's really dim and they give you like some sort of tea, which was garbage. It tasted like um, brown paper bag. <laughs> but they, they, uh, they had a, in the corner like this fake... Um, crackling digital like fireplace and we were all supposed to sit around it and i immediately was like i'm not participating in that (laughs) (laughs) so anyway we end up going into the space and it's like all of these stations um and it's all of these like vr stations so you put on vr headphones but also like the materials they chose for each one were supposed to be like interactive so like it was like tactile so like one for instance i'll just describe this one room it was completely covered in this like faux fur like long, with a long staple too so it had like a three inch long fur right so um and it's just like acrylic or yes something, like it, gross. yeah so it sucks the moisture right out of your hands but it's also it's been open for three months so how many hundreds of people have touched this Ew. thing which i didn't know i thought that that weekend was it's only i thought it was like a pop-up and this was like an like oh my god so i thought oh okay whatever so i was like putting on these goggles and touching these materials thinking this has just opened the coronavirus could have been all up totally, that shit. right so disgusting 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 which i ended up breaking out with i don't even break up but oh, i ended yeah. up breaking this I know, is gonna I be too long story. anyway know. long story short don't fall for these pop-up insta scams that are showing up like i'm especially seeing them in, on instagram but they end up being these like like they suck you in they you know it's like fifty dollars they claim it's like a luxury spa there was nothing luxury about it and nothing spa like about it <laughs> it was like awful so at one point we go to another place where it was two bean bags in the, on on um gravel i mean and it was made to bags, look like i know like... <laughs> and it was made to look like an outdoor out, like a backyard space so we sit down and then there was like a picket fence around us we sit down in it we put on the vr goggles and i'm like there's a kaleidoscope coming at me in my eyes and then all i hear is ah oh, fuck and i i was like what there is that you and i like reached and i grabbed his arm and he's like, oh, my God, I think I'm bleeding. I'm like, where? And he's like, take off the goggles. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so I take off my goggles. It is dark. A huge um, pot bigger than my head came crashing down off of the window that was on top of uh, that was above us where we were sitting above the bean gags and almost knocked him out, hit him dead in the center of his head. His head was like gushing blood. Oh, my God. Yeah. Are you guys going to sue? They didn't have, no, no, no. We don't. I mean, he was he didn't need stitches and we were just like, you know, yeah. and learned. also don't it's like, do these garbage who do you even scams. sue? Right. Because some of these things are like, it's not kit. an establishment no. that's like there. That no, you can, I yeah, doubt this is even a business. Like, There's no way with those materials again. that they chose it would pass inspection. Oh, 
like God. as an as an interior designer that there's no way that that happened like oh my god so anyway, moral story is um don't go to these garbage hell pop-ups uh just like the museum yeah. of ice cream in new york the same thing happened there too oh where god. hundreds and hundreds of people bought tickets and the, thousands i think and they were all like left sitting outside for hours and like it was Terrible. a nightmare so be careful what you so that was your buy uh, on Instagram. Recent experience in at Dumbo. Dumbo. <laughs> but Dumbo's lovely. I mean, that's the most iconic photo of like there's a one oh, street that people look yeah, down the, yeah, yeah. the Brooklyn Bridge is oh, in the okay, background. Yeah. I know the the, the Yeah, photo. people often think that's Manhattan when they see the yeah. image, but uh it's not. It's okay. we're actually in Brooklyn cool. for that image. All right, so that's my story about Dumbo. But yeah. let's go back to Tyler. Sorry, that was a ah. <laughs> little segue. Um so Tyler Wallach, we loved him. He was loved. so much fun. Such a fun interview. And he gave us these cute tees with his graphics on them. Yeah. He's, um, what did they call him? A love child between uh, Lisa Frank and um, Keith, Keith Haring. Haring. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. As you can see, it's very bright, bold, colorful graphic, graphic patterns. Um, and we learned a bit more about him yesterday, like that he didn't come necessarily from a fine art background he came from a theater background which performative yeah which i think is apparent in the video interview oh yeah like, he's, he's just a, just a, a joy. joy yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but i thought it was interesting too that he just started painting because he was asked to do it and it's not it wasn't yeah. even a hobby at that point and yep. he just made it work and he introduced his performative side to it by doing it in like live and bars yes, and stuff. Live interactive. And he's grown this huge business now. Yeah. With such success. I know. It's he, amazing. Um, we just learned about how he kept, you know, putting himself out there, being professional, taking it taking it seriously. He's super profesh. Yep. Super profesh. Soup's profesh. Handsome, and talented. Just being like a nice person to work with and, and doing good work. To. And I think like that goes such a long way totally. um, in a in a world and a city like New York that's like competitive, you know, yeah, with, uh, with as many artists as there are. And he's getting gigs, to, you know, with like big fashion brands doing like window displays and um, yeah, big international bands too, like Samsung and stuff. Yeah, um, I think it's amazing that in New York. How, a way that you can stand out is by being kind. <laughs> Just, you know what I mean? like, Seriously, we were talking about how quote? it's like, like um, be nice to people and do good work. That's like a quote, like a designer quote. Yeah, I just think it's interesting though that like you, as a creative person, like sometimes you can get. Um, I, I think you can be. A, you can come off as like. What am I trying to say here? I guess insecurities can come through to the point where like it stops you from like remembering to just be kind and, and go about like you know just these niceties that you should be doing interacting mm -hmm. socially like i yeah. think a lot of creative people lose that side of it or get frustrated because they're doing everything yeah um but just a simple act of kindness towards like a potential um right. client down the road could could right. really lead to like amazing things yeah nobody wants to work with an asshole i mean i hope what i just said made sense i feel like i just <laughs> choked on we'll words see, we'll, see. we'll see um and he also talked about how labeling himself as a queer artist um, has done wonders for her, his career. And like he that's a, a conscious choice that he he made um, was to put that that term Label. queer. Yep. Um, talking yeah. about money, like just being well, transparent was definitely a theme. Yeah, I mean, I remember there was a time where you like the thought was that their queer community was so small that marketing to them isn't right. worth it. It's not profitable. Right. But I mean, hello. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I really loved I love talking about that with him. Yeah. I feel like we made a new friend too. <laughs> oh, we totally did. Yeah, I'm glad Adorable. that he's going to be joining the um queer community. The community. The queer creative community. Yeah. So here's our interview with Tyler Wallach. Yes, enjoy. Yes, totally. Really, it fills in. 
really filling in some pieces. That Sometimes are we'll be interviewing people remotely, and I'm like, I'm like mm, this, just like and I'm like, ooh, I love it, and I get that. <laughs> Jonah, Jonah, yes. Jonah, <laughs> back to the guest. Yes. <laughs> All right, do you want to begin? Okay, so we're here today in Dumbo, Brooklyn, in the studio of Tyler Wallach, who is referred to as the 1988 love child of Keith Haring and Lisa Frank because of mm-hmm. your bright, bold street art style. Um, your work spans canvas, clothing, live interactive painting, as well as producing work to benefit LGBTQ charities like the Trevor Project and Habitat for Humanity and many more. Yep. Thanks for having us today. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Welcome for to Dumbo. Down with us. Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about your studio and your company? Yeah, absolutely. So Tyler Wallach is me. I'm an artist. Uh, I moved here about 10 years ago from Texas. Um, out of a frustration of getting a BFA in musical theater, because, you know, what else is a kid like me from Texas going to do? Um, I, I was taking so many theater classes that I had turned to a screen printing class. Uh, it was the only art class at my college you could take without prerequisites. So as a way to get away from like dance class, singing class, voice speaking class, voice singing class, like just so much theater your senior year before you graduate that I sought out to like create something that I could do independently that did not depend on other people telling me it was okay to do or right to do, or that if I looked the right age or if I didn't, if I was too skinny or too whatever that that comes along with putting yourself in the world of theater to constantly be someone else. So I turned to a style of art that was all my own uh, that was derived from this screen printing class. And I sort of ran from there and started doing, um, I started drawing the characters and my name on Hello, My Name Is stickers that you get oh, from like yeah. parties, mixers, mm-hmm. orgies, what have you. Yes. <laughs> um, and so uh, I, I, and I put them all over campus. I put them on the stop signs. I put them in the music building. I put them everywhere. And it kind of like became this thing. Um, that I that I had stickers everywhere and I don't even know if Instagram was around yet to be honest I don't think it was social media hadn't really been a big boom in 2008 or 9 the iPhone came out I didn't have it oh okay, yeah. it was exclusive to AT&T and you yeah. know my daddy didn't have no AT&T we had well, the on the Verizon. yeah I had to wait forever mm-hmm. you at least you had a Blackberry I had a girl. Blackberry yeah I didn't have any Blackberry <laughs> I wish I wish uh, no so I made my way out of college um, and th- at the very tail end of it dipping my feet into art that um, eventually when I moved here to New York City, I auditioned for an off-Broadway musical and booked it naturally. Uh, It was the Drowsy Chaperone uh, being produced by some of the people who had just done it on Broadway. And I moved to New York City to like do musical theater and like I moved here and I booked it and I got the part and I just felt so like unhappy, like Mm. trudging around the city, bowing to like get off stage. And then immediately it's like, it's over girl get back on the subway like get mm-hmm. back home do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars no one cares that you bowed tonight yeah. it's like it's a really interesting bubble that pops when you're like learning how to do performance in a university setting and then come here and try and like live your life mm-hmm. get life experience meet someone fall in love do something go on a date go to dinner somewhere exciting and then like also give your life uh you know to theater and be judged in that way it's just a mess that's really interesting it's a mess yeah yeah that is interesting i can't imagine what it's like getting off stage and then being like oh right now i'm on like the subway with these regular people <laughs> yeah you it, it's a, nobody it, knows who i am nobody really, knows what i just did yes it really kind of messed with me a little bit and i thought okay like this is really great and i'm happy but i almost felt like it happened that way for me to push something within myself to say, okay, you got exactly what you wanted and you're 22 years old and you just moved to New York City. So all your dreams came true. Now what? Like this is when you're really going to have to think of something and do something. And more and more, I kept doing art and I, uh, you know, my friend started a website and he wanted to do a silent auction. And I thought, okay, I'll give you a big painting. I'll just do this big painting. And, um, someone from Viacom buys the painting. Okay, someone from Viacom has a conversation with somebody at Nickelodeon, and then all of a sudden you're in the room. All of those types of really strange instances would not stop happening to me to a point to where 
strangely enough, I said, okay, I'm not going to do theater anymore. I'm going to do visual art, which let me say my parents were just so thrilled about. Let me tell you this. Okay, you're going to go to college and get a degree in musical theater in Texas, and then you're going to move to New York City a year later and then tell us that you're going to stop doing theater so that you can draw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> doodle. Doodle, as my mom said. Your doodles. Does she? She used to. I love your doodle. doodle. Oh, Tyler, you're, what are you doing with those doodles? So what what's this you... Nickelodeon story? Well, yeah, that seems like a pairing for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm greatly, greatly inspired by uh, 90s cartoons, All Real Monsters, Rugrats, mm -hmm. Hey Arnold, the whole world of the drip slime in Nickelodeon is like directly correlated mm -hmm. to most of the work that I do. Um, so my friend who worked at Viacom at, at, Viacom at the time, Kim Hicks, uh, passed my name along and I got a meeting. It didn't turn out to anything. But then years later, I would get another meeting with Miss Jojo Siwa. Hey, girl. Uh, mm -hmm. She's a huge teen queen pop star. And um, she has uh, lots of shows through Nickelodeon. And uh, they're a sponsor of hers. So we had talked together about a possible collaboration um, in the future. We'll see. Cool. Very yeah. cool. That's really cool. I can totally yeah. see that. So then you, so you were, do you still do those name tags, by the way? Because I think I've seen them. I used to do a lot of street art, but I did get caught by an undercover police officer. And the experience kind of, uh, it's like, Mm, not so worth it. Did he yeah. spank you? It was like a verbal spanking. <laughs> I wish it would have been physical. I know. Like no, it. it was like, it was like, it was really, they tried to scare me. It was like very intimidation. Like, okay, we'll, we're waiting for a cop car. Like, we gotta, we gotta take you in for this. We have to. Oh I'm sorry. It's like, God. Out of my hands. And I'm like sweating. I didn't know any better. And they were never going to take me in. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. No, they weren't going to do anything. Oh, I know. God. So then Tyler Studio Studios was born. Uh, so yeah. Wallach Studios was born. Um, and you just started doing, jumping into apparel. Yeah. So basically what, what finally came to fruition would be um, I was doing live canvas paintings either at like queer raves or bars or clubs because I thought in my head, if you do an art show as an artist, you know, you could get like 20 people in the room, 30 people in the room. Um, and so that's like 30 sets of eyes on the paintings. And then if one of them sells, then that's like right. only 35 people unless you get a photo of it. And then so taking from grandfather Andy Warhol, if you mm -hmm. want to take something and repeat it a bunch of times to give it more meaning and more impact, much like Keith Haring did as well with the Radiant Baby and a lot of his other famous um, drawings. So I thought, OK, I need to continue the life of these paintings somehow. So I got high res images taken of them. And then that's when I started flattening them in Photoshop or InDesign, what have you, and uh, making them much higher contrast and then printing them mm. on uh, textiles and different types of clothing. And I mean, I'm like I said, a kid of the 90s. I had, uh, you know, your your lunch kit had like cartoons on it. Your underwear had cartoons on it, like your backpack, your pencil case, yeah. your pencil, your erasers. So yep. I'm like in this school of thought of Lena, sort of like Lisa Frank that you mentioned earlier. I want to print my art on as much stuff as I can because mm -hmm. it really does keep the life of it going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to hear about that whole like manufacturing process too. It's been interesting. Um, but first, what is your like consumer demographic like? You know, it's interesting because as a queer person and making so many interesting, specific queer centric items, mm -hmm. I I always thought, you know, oh, it's like a gay brand, but really, it's grown to be so much more than that. I think it's, you know. If my dad can wear it on the golf course, the, does know, he and, rep it on the he golf does. course? That's he does. He loves it. Um, I think he kind of like realized when you're wearing a shirt, like something that I may. Yeah. Um, like when you're wearing this out, some people are going to say something to you <laughs> and they're going to look at you. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, they're going to mm -hmm. look at you. And I don't know if everybody is. Um, I don't know if everybody's necessarily ready to be stared at. It's really interesting. A lot of people come across my clothing and they think, 
oh, I love it. But like, I could like, mm -hmm. it's just, I couldn't, I can't, you know, I can never. And I'm like, no, you could, mm -hmm. you just, you know, it's for a specific person. And I, mm -hmm. and I love that because a lot of the time I'll hire people to do sales with me if I do pop-up shops and they're like, they're very, um, oh, do you want to try this on? And they'll do anything. And I come from the school of thought. I'm like, if you walk by and you look at my shirt and you're like, oh my God, I, right. I get that. I love it. And if you don't get it, you just don't get it. Like, you yeah, it. yeah. There's no pulling you in. I'm right. not going to try and oversell. You ain't ready. You ain't you ready. Ain't ready. <laughs> you Girl, right? Like, you ain't ready. It's okay. Maybe one day you will be. Mm -hmm. yeah. You. It's interesting because I read somewhere, too, that how you described yourself as a queer artist. Um, why is that important to you? Mm. Well, I had started out doing... Uh, specifically queer art, kind of phallic, and then more stuff, more specifically just with the rainbow. The rainbow was the most important part to me. And I think that that just comes from growing up in the South mm -hmm. and, um, you know, having a hard time with coming out and having it be kind of entangled with religion, which is just inevitable sometimes. When what you, religion? Um, Girl, they try to pull me into Baptists. Then they try to get me in that non-denominational. They were like, okay, you don't want that. We're going to take you over here. No, and then, no, 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 no tongues, no Church of Christ. No, no, no. Church of Christ tried to pull me in too. No instruments allowed. My God. Oh what are they my doing God. in there? Um, so but fast yeah. forward to the phallic <laughs> Yeah, so rainbow I'm putting up all of this, art. all of this like rainbow centric art that looks quite queer if you were to look at it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So really it all like that branding came from this street artist in LA named Jeremy Novi. And he found me on the internet because social media was a booming in 2010 and 11. And I immediately jumped on Instagram as soon as it was something that became available. And I was making these interesting new connections with people. And he said, Hey, you're doing all this like very gay, queer street art. I'm doing a show in LA called the history of queer street art. And oh, wow. you're, we want to we'd add you to it as like what's happening now um as opposed to awesome. what some of them were doing in the past and like they had just found me and they plugged me into it and um right after that i they were like okay we want to we want to bring you to la to do this art show the history of queer street art uh because you're obviously a queer artist and i said yes, i am <laughs> a queer artist <laughs> and my fee is <laughs> this fee and then i called my dad and i was like oh my god like these people came they they think i'm like some artist and at that point he was like okay like if you're really doing this now and you're not going to do theater and you're going to do uh visual art like you are some artist like you have to you have to run with it you're playing the part now okay so you need to like really take this seriously and go for it and i was like okay oh, i just got goosebumps yeah so and that's and that's one of the interesting things that like I didn't send anybody artwork mm -hmm. for approval. Right. I didn't ask for it. That's one of the first early things that came to me. And then from that, the Miami Dade Gay and Lesbian Lesbian Business Foundation found me and they said, Hey, we saw that you're some queer street artist who did wow. this show in LA. We want you to come to our year end gala and do paintings live in the middle of our open bars. So like people will be lined up to get drinks because you know everybody lined up to get drinks. Mm -hmm. So I was I was painting in the middle of all these these two lines, and then they auctioned off the paintings at the end of the night. Well, who bids on them? David Bromstad from HGTV. Oh, who has color splash, and now my lottery dream home on Friday oh nights my on HGTV. Gosh. Best ratings gosh. on the network. What a confirmation for your art. And immediately he's like, I have this TV show on HGTV. These paintings are fantastic. Who are you? Get in touch with my manager. And they flew me to Miami. This is the first time, you know, they have flew me out. Mm -hmm. I was feeling so fancy in a hotel and it all just sort of manifested. And I was like, holy shit, this is really going, this is really going to, this is going to happen. And, you know, there's like lots of ups and downs between opportunities like that. But those two things, the history of queer street art in LA and then that, that painting gig that happened in Miami were the like two affirmations that I was like, okay, I'm just gonna yeah. keep riding this wave. Uh, yeah, and also to Jonah's question, like from the beginning of your sort of career yeah. as an artist, you were, you identified as a queer artist. Like you were yes. just in that world. It just That's happened so awesome. that way. And it was like a gift because I think, I don't know, I don't really know what I would have other, what I really would have identified with otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you painting your entire life? Interestingly, 
No. Like, cause I, I'm curious about the technique, right? So, cause it sounded like you were in a totally performative sort of background mm -hmm. and yes. then you jump into sort of like a fine art sort of. Yeah. Without, there. without any training really. It was just that the, the idea came from the screen printing class that I had taken, which was my introduction to taking art seriously, I guess, um, in my twenties. And, uh, you had to, you had to keep an idea together the entire semester. So you had to draw a theme of like what you saw yourself as and like <laughs> the idea of it was like that i was doing musical theater and i was a cloud and i could show you any <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> we both went to the same art school so we've been in classes I, I, we've been in classes like this and we've had to do this so we, i totally get you i was like i'm not making fun of me no i know i'm making there. fun of me <laughs> I was like, I'm a cloud, and like I could show you rain yeah. when uh -huh, I cry, uh -huh. and like electricity, yeah, and I, and I make noise, and I move because I wanted my 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 uh, <laughs> my career goal was to book a national tour, which now sounds like a goddamn nightmare. Okay, yeah. I don't want right, to do a right, national right. tour. I don't want to be on the the bus. I don't want to do it. Ugh. I don't want to stay cramped up in cast housing or some shit. Like that. <laughs> um, but. Uh, where were we? Sorry. Just... Oh yeah. So where were we? <laughs> right? No, I was just talking oh, how. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was interesting how you started off with painting rather than perform with a performative background. I can imagine yeah. what it must be like to then be asked to sort of perform painting in a room full of people where they're oh. like watching what you do, right? So you couldn't have had your technique completely down at that point. No, no, no. That was like really, really early, and they're very messy looking compared to what I do. Mm -hmm. So, but you to, did like, it. What I can do now. Oh yeah. Yeah. And was it like pen and ink first? So what I did was uh, I would do acrylic markers. Okay. And then go in quickly with watercolor. Because mm -hmm. you, can, you can just like really splash it in there. And if something goes over the line, it still looked okay. And it was like really drippy. Yeah. And I could work really quickly with uh, watercolor, which is what I had trained myself on. I had painted live on Monday nights at this party called Hot Fruit. At Metropolitan Bar, mm -hmm. and uh, I there was a skee ball machine in the back of the bar, and I used to lay a, ta a sheet down and paint on top of it, and that's kind of how the idea of live painting came to be. Because I had also really missed the performing. Like someone like me, you get addicted to kind of like the attention or whatever. And I mean, if you're going to take yourself seriously enough to like pursue theater, that's mm -hmm. like the art of taking yourself way too seriously yeah <laughs> it's in there essence, it is like that so it's still within me right. to want to be seen to a certain extent so the live painting really was great but then it caused me like so much anxiety because there was no conversation between me mm -hmm. and the people it it threw me off just like all the oh what are you doing what do you do mm -hmm. what's your name which is fine so I started wearing headphones, but it was weird because I was at a bar. So the DJ got really offended. <laughs> it's like, why do you come here and wear headphones? Like, I'm a DJ. You would rap. I was like, I'm sorry. It's like a. I'm working. Leave me alone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you know, disrespect <laughs> DJ Sokolowski if you're still out there. So we, you have all these unique patterns that are like on the clothing and all of your pieces. How do you come up with each one? Like, you know, and how frequently are you they, coming up with a new? Design? I'll, I'll just be doodling really. I'll just draw random characters, um, in random situations based on any type of song or film or painting, whatnot that I've decided to be inspired by. And, um, yeah, so like this particular one here, this was, uh, a draw that I did in my sketchbook and then scanned it in black and white and then colored it in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. All my little character guys in there. So that's a very old, old drawing mm -hmm. um, technically. So I would say, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really just drawing all the time and then I'll make little notes and think, oh, this would be such a great shirt or come yeah. back and like do a bunch of colored ideas of it and then um, see where you end up and mm -hmm. yeah. Do you draw like a large scale pattern? Because so I have like a background in textiles and I was yeah. thinking about like how you're all of your apparel. Do you, how do you create a pattern on like a 54 inch wide or do you do like a double wide? Pa like because uh, it doesn't seem to have a lot of repeat. In yeah. The, uh, and also like, ones. is it seamless? And it it's, it's not at exactly the like just the way the shirts are sewn. These particular ones, these are sewn into fabric. And uh, these are printed on fabric and then cut and sewn. And then like there's others 
Oh, no, that is cut and sewn as well. I don't really do the cheaper ones anymore, mm -hmm. where they used to be a white shirt. Yeah. And it's a technique called sublimation printing. Mm -hmm. They print out a huge sheet of paper, and then they basically just steam a white T-shirt. They steam it onto a polyester shirt, and it gets all of the um, it gets all the color on there. Mm. But this is a more expensive process. Um, but I have it outsourced to China now. Sorry, mm -hmm. China. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I used to I used to be able to get all of my stuff out of California, but. They priced me out. Sarah, so, so are you designing down. specific, like, are you taking your pattern and then putting it and then being like, oh, you know what? This will be a great shirt, hat, and bag. Or are you doing it more right. like, I need to come up with a new line of bags to, and then design specifically for that? Or is you it know, just like piece by piece? It right? is piece by piece. I wish that there was more of a formula to it, but really, um, it'll just... I'm, and I'm working on doing much less now. I find that when you give people less options, mm -hmm. it's like... I don't sometimes like going to diners because the menu is just so much. Yeah, no, do a few things and do them well, right? But in and out burger, whatever, got four things on the menu. Right. Yeah. Love and it. they do it well. I love it. Like, yeah, you know what you're going to get. I know. <laughs> so I'm focusing on that because, like, my brand as is is a little too much. You know, it's just a, ooh. So it's like less is, I'm finding that, like, less is so much more. Because if you have, like, six of these overwhelming t shirts in your face, it's like, immediately you're like what's the difference between yeah so when you have right. two with one bag and like yep. a sock or a scarf so i'm learning i made that problem i mm -hmm. came up with uh <laughs> i had a fabric line in, in, for interiors and i came up with um a line of 18 patterns that i then did in 18 different uh, like, okay. colorways See? so it was like pages upon pages and i was like is no architect is interior designer is going to look through this <laughs> like it's not yeah like, you know what this one right. this right. derivative yeah. yeah it's it but but you get so lost in your process as yeah an you artist. need to learn editing too i think and that you grow our companies are actually the same age and i think yours is too isn't mm -hmm. it 10 years ten? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah ten, oh, ten, ten. Happy ten. <laughs> yeah it's interesting because you think you're like you just you hear 10 years and you think oh you should be some sort of pro but no nope still I agree. learning totally and you know when you i don't ever want to stop learning mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and your company ends up being like it grows on it in its own pace in its own mm -hmm. way too so it's it's not like you're there's some sort of script right that you follow it's um yeah you really just got to figure it out as you go and it's been like we said i mean your podcast it's just been so embraced by the queer community that it's just yeah it's become such a big part of my life and I love it. That's I love awesome. I love y'all for coming here and doing this. This is great. What about your sales? Is it mostly word of mouth in like events? Because I see you at LGBTQ events. You're yeah, right. so yeah. Pride's a huge, huge event for me every year. I will do as many pairings with big brands as I can and try and get them to donate as much money to LGBTQ charities as I can. So, you know, I'll do, I did a pop-up shop where I did live painting for housing works and we donated mm -hmm. the proceeds of the painting that mm -hmm. went to silent auction. Um, I did a queer flea market at the studios of Vice. I know oh. they think they closed. Oops. Sorry, Vice. But anyway, oh. I did a pop-up shop there and, uh, Let's see, like I did custom hats. I was painting on a project for uh, Ralph Lauren. And then I did custom uh, clothing painting for Levi. And I did an influencer event for Steve Madden. Okay, wow. Painting 40 pairs of shoes in an hour. Oh, wow. I shouldn't have agreed to it. <laughs> but it worked. We got it done, right? Make it work. Yeah, we did. That was a that was a test of my strength. And I <laughs> succeeded barely. But it was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. So do you find any like ups and downs in business? I would say, I mean, yeah, like it's it's really interesting having um, a business. All businesses are seasonal. Mm -hmm. It's And that's a stressful kind of thing. Like even when I was a waiter for seven years um, before that I was, you know, had my own studio space and, and I'm able to do my own thing. It's like you better not spend too much in June because, you know, right. February is coming. So there's an there's a push and pull to it like i'm overly active like booked every day like a drag queen in june mm -hmm. but then come like july august you know things kind of calm down but then like december is absolutely crazy but i won't hear from anybody until march again mm -hmm. it's like people are like as far i'm living in the world of where spending exists and right after new year's Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't spending yeah. nothing. Neither am so I, but <laughs> I'm not what either. Do you do on your downtime to work so, on your business? 
interestingly enough, I'm kind of working through that right mm -hmm. now. I'm I'm in a lull kind of creatively, but I'm just trying to embrace it and not work against it. Um, luckily, this has pulled me up a little mm -hmm. bit today having um you know having you good glad we can get you out of bed on a saturday <laughs> a rainy saturday which rainy. otherwise my god um yeah i it, it's interesting because now i'm in a position to where i don't have the day job anymore i'm lucky enough to yeah. be able to pursuing this full time um but it's like sometimes it's like what else can i do mm -hmm. because i'm not exactly gonna be like doing marketed posts towards sales right now so, totally just I, keeping up I'm with in, social media i'm in i've been in a lull for my company i we're working on projects right now but i've had to learn how to just be like it's okay that you don't have anything to do today yes just like calm down yes. and embrace it yeah because there's going to be days that are coming really soon where yeah. you're where going you're to be like, bitching I about complaining all day long. i have to i can't yeah. believe i have no free time like no i'm right. going to be this busy for so long so that's why i'm learning to like appreciate yeah. and not overthink and not overwork myself to be like wow you really didn't do anything today for like mm -hmm. your brand or your business or furthering when you know when you've just done an art show two months ago or just like did higher sales in December than you've ever done in mm -hmm. any December before. Like, you know, you have to appreciate that and honor that work. Totally. And let it spill over to the times when you don't have yeah. so much It's also a great opportunity stuff. to start something new completely out of your box. Like, I just signed up for a ceramics class, which I cool. don't really have too much experience with. But I was sure. like, oh, let me just do this during our, like, little lull. Absolutely. And that's one thing that I've thought, like, I... I'm like, I need to put myself in a position to be proud of the things that I'm doing. So I just need to find a couple more things to do. I'm going to get my ass back in the gym too. I need mm -hmm. to <laughs> finally. Girl. Well, it's that time of year. Too, yeah, so everyone does it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like dreading it. Cause I know that first step back in there, I'm the type of person to where I can't fool myself. So like if I'm in the gym, I'm eating right. Mm -hmm. There's no, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't let myself off. You like, completely yeah. commit. No, yeah. There's no. Why are you gonna go to the gym if you're not gonna? You know? Right, right, right. Theron was yeah. telling me because he works for WW. He was telling me that um, the 18th of January is when so people start immediately January first usually right. with their um, New Year's resolutions yeah. and mm -hmm. they go to the gym and gyms and will be subscribe packed. to Weight Watchers. But and all January that. 18th is the cutoff date where everyone just gives up. <laughs> like the so 18th. Deep. I know. Only like three Good weeks. Lord. <laughs> It's really sad. Definitely blew my mind. I couldn't believe Very it. Upsetting. So gym member, like people at the gyms work from January 1st to January 8th. And yeah. then they just see and it dwindle. They, yeah. Just like, chill and spring. And those gyms are collecting stuff. those membership dues. Oh, because still, you know, nobody's going. Well, Kathy Conklin's not going to go down there and cancel her membership. <laughs> she was so proud to sign up. She's too embarrassed to cancel it. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> But Social yeah. media is a big part of your um, yeah. outreach too, right? Can yeah. you sort of talk about that and how do you, you utilize Yeah, um, so social media? social media for me has been kind of like a given. I'm lucky enough to, I'm I'm 32 now, but uh, yeah, I think that I, <laughs> I think that I was able to like hit it just right. I didn't grow up mm -hmm. on computers, but like computers came around when i was in junior high and there was like weird word processing that you could learn and then like even around high school i was learning like dreamweaver which isn't even around anymore yeah. to make websites i remember yeah, yeah I right so like i was just in just involved enough to like realize oh you know the iphone is you know i was in college god i bet that sounds weird i was in college when the iphone came out <laughs> that'll be weird in 20 years but um, yeah you know that's gonna be that's gonna sound funny to somebody um i had a beeper in high school a beeper. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you have a i live Girl, you, you didn't have a beeper, beeper in high school you needed to be oh. oh i know i, I had did. a cell phone that i lost and my dad's like that's it yeah, <laughs> lost it. I was like, no. Oh, Cell phones man. came out when I was eighteen or nineteen, I think. Mm -hmm, what, well, the mm -hmm. one that you had, yeah, not the, yep. not the car ones, but the real cell phones. Yeah. yeah, they were huge. I just um, cut you off and I forgot what no, you were. No, it's fine. Um, I, I through social media, so like social I was lucky media. enough to be involved with computers and you know and find phones cool and you know iTunes and all of that fun stuff happening on phones. So I finally I got an iPod Touch. So like you didn't have to have mm -hmm. the iPhone, but you could still get on Wi-Fi. So yeah. I was able to, you know, find out what's Grindr, what's Instagram, what's all of these weird, you know, what are apps? What are we, what are we all doing here? So I was able to play around with, with 
I mean, gratuitously exploiting the fact that I had just moved to New York City and I was like young and making art and just posting pictures of the city. And early, early on, like some of the first eight or nine pictures I was taking were getting like 200 likes or 300 likes. So I knew that I was like onto something and I liked it. So I never really stopped. And I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> so I, it, it became like another derivative of performance mm -hmm. to me. And, um, you know, that also has its lulls and ups and downs. It's very difficult uh, to do it all on your own. It gets kind of exhausting because you feel to a certain extent that like, how much more can I beg? Even though it's not begging, it's just at some point you, you know, posting for a brand when it's just you. And it's like, it's Tyler Wallach Studio. It's not the Rainbow Factory. Mm -hmm. You know, it's me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, my name is the brand. So it takes a lot out of you and you feel like you're beating a dead horse, or, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but the strategy of it, through. right? Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, you just have to what, push how through. Can we do this? I don't what have any. What the hashtags, the time, like... yeah, scheduling and hashtags. And then, like, also, mm -hmm. there's, um, you know, there's technology that you can use now to schedule all right. of schedule it. So yeah. you don't have to wake up in the morning at nine to post it precisely at yeah. nine forty-five to make the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Are you on with your personal? Like, do you have a personal? Yeah, yeah. Social media? Are you more active oh, on those? Oh. Or does that ruin it for you as a business too? Yeah, I don't. I don't have personal. Yeah, I don't either. I, don't I just want, have business, I don't want and it, it it really takes me completely out of it, and it becomes a chore. And I'm like, and I don't. I'm so glad because like. Sometimes I can get away with like posting picture in a tank top, but like if <laughs> for my brand, I mean, but like if I had my own personal, like what would I be, what would I be doing? I'd be doing what other people are out there doing. Yeah, which is that wild. I'm, I'm just getting introduced to gay Twitter and I'm like, get away from my Twitter I'm account. Lord, I, I love <laughs> I your Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> I have two, one's private. Yeah, the got, got Twitter, two. gay Twitter's out of control well, and I love no, it. No, oh, I mean, I love it too. There's it's no- It's so entertaining. There's no, um, it, there's you can't hide anything on Twitter. No, like you can post nudes. Like, what am I trying to say? What's the word? Oh. It's like there's no, there's no like X-rated, R-rated. It's it's uh, you, you can do anything. Anything is goes. Yeah, it's like the wild, wild west. Really? Yo, yeah. full nudity. Yes. Oh yes. Wow. Yeah. I would say like porn more, is like completely all over Twitter. More, more. If you know um, it all. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wild. Or if you're following the right their straps <laughs> absolutely yeah people make whole careers you're, out you're of it all like all over twitter oh, yeah. jonah i'm like i love it yeah. i love it too it's, it's so entertaining me, yeah it is it's I like can a just like giggle bitchy to high school gossip it is twitter's a hot mess but it's so fun it's so and you hot. just giggle you know oh, wait do you regret using your name in your studio now as since because oh. that's because people are gonna relate you to your brand no matter what yeah. so well yeah um I don't think I I don't regret it, but I do I do think that I never I never dreamt of like what it would come to what it would become right. and then like how I would feel about that because many times I'm I mean I am a one man band. I do all of my photography, all of my design, all of the original art, all of my marketing, all of my social media, all of the editing, all of the PR. Any celebrity I've ever gotten to wear my clothing has been, you know, through me or through my manager who I've been uh, blessed enough to be able to have and pay this year to help me out. Amazing. I did a commercial for Samsung on Fox TV for The Masked Singer. Oh, uh, wow. it was a what show. What do you mean you did like you did the art for it? Yeah, so they brought me in and I did some concept art of so it's like a singing it's like a karaoke contest and they wear masks okay so you okay really yeah yeah like yeah guessing and you can get eliminated and it's it's really fun and it's like fox's big new show i actually want to see that and I they're like really it, yeah. fun colorful characters and it okay. was like right down my alley so they're like we want you to do like a a boxing poster of like this character versus that character it's oh fun be a singing God. round of them so it was like really cool so they filmed me drawing it on the samsung note 10 plus okay and, um uh, yeah, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, and I'm like drawing it, and they show it in time time lapse, and then how it integrates with the new Samsung watch. Okay. I'm flipping my watch. Did you get one for free? Oh yeah. Oh, thank you, Samsung. Thank you, Samsung. <laughs> thank you, Samsung. <laughs> yeah. So I did that commercial with them, and I I mean I definitely needed a manager. That was the biggest contract right. I'd ever looked at, and my dad was even like, you need to look have a lawyer look at that. And I was yeah. like, we don't need to pay no lawyer. No, we're not, we're okay for now. Like they're not trying to. Um, and luckily, the people that put it together. Um, they were so fantastic. And they were like, look, we want to watch out for you. You are an independent artist. And it's like Fox TV, Samsung, and like, you, you know, who so said that? Wanna... The 
the companies were telling you they went no, over? No, no. Oh, okay. The the your management company. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, my manager and me are one, but there was this company um, that put this all together. Oh, so I see. Fox hired someone to get creative about how they can integrate the phone with their TV show, and that's what very cool. yeah. So this girl's brand, who she was from Houston, Texas, also, and as soon as she called me, she was like, "Oh my God, you're." Houston. I was like, I got this in the bag. Oddly <laughs> enough, the very first show I ever auditioned for when Turn I moved the in, accent on. I came in, I was like, hey y'all, my name's Tyler. <laughs> like, I just, and they were like, oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. You're just the cutest with your little hey y'all. And I just knew immediately, I was like, oh my God, this guy, of course. Oh, like, wow, this man. Yeah, he loves it. And I was like, I think I have a really good feeling about it. And That's amazing. You got to get a lawyer involved with contracts though. I, I know. Just future, you got to. I've been burned by that. <gasps> really? Yo, I've had nightmares where <sighs> I've had a client who's a billionaire and he hired me personally to do overlook a building on the west side. And I ended up I ended up having to sue him. And he really pushed it. He can afford to, right? He really and it was all for just a couple of thousand dollars. And he just would not go away. Oh but I didn't let go and I eventually won. Yeah. But I ended up spending all of the money that I would have made. Mm-hmm. Sure. Just just to like spite him, it yeah. was, it's. That was I should have walked away. It was real. Oh, my oh that God. really happened. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but yeah. So now I, I always will have a lawyer look over my thing. Yeah. It'll, it'll only cost a couple hundred dollars to oh, have it. A it's do. worth it. Yeah. You just it's never know. It. Like yeah. we went through line by line by line because it was my first big contract, and like we really went through and like we went through together because we're you know this is our first year working together, and it's something this big we wanted to look at together so that we we're both on the same page, but um. Yeah, I mean, I really, I was probably a little naive to it. Not too naive. You, just I never, know, you never know. I mean, I think I had a unique no, experience, but sure, sure, it's not sure. always miserable like that. But yeah. um, no, but it's all, always I mean, good. Things it was a happen. lesson learned for me. Girl, the drag queens out there don't get paid sometimes. Yes. yes. You know, Shout out to P- what is it, Peter and Murray? No, <laughs> which it's not Peter and Murray. It's the other one. It's uh, and now I'm gonna get in trouble for saying that. No, I know, no, but they Peter and Murray are the good ones. Yeah. It's the, somebody uh, else. But I love the way that uh, they shade them, though. Like, yeah, total Monet shade. Exchange has a yes. uh, petty and messy. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. Have you anyway. seen her new show, by the way? Yeah. Uh, exchange, exchange rate. rate. I love fantastic. it. It's so good. As far as like queer so programming good. goes on television, Monet Exchange is hosting a TV show. Um, what is it? With the, the Build, network? Ne- Build Network. Yeah, yeah. Build. And their programming is great. I know. We're so like, we're like, how do we get on there? Uh, like, get in the audience. Yeah. I just want to go hang out. Yeah. Oh, if you yeah, ever want to go on the show, we should go to. I would love to go. They have a calendar oh. of events on their website, like, okay. and then I guess you just. They're, they're but it's the show up, cool or it's yeah. just like modern take on what public access used to be. Right. That is what. Yeah. And, and it's, it's so. It's, it's like it takes all the great aspects of it, where it's like you know, a, like it's a little messy production wise, but course. the set's great. I love it. Oh, the set's great, <laughs> and, and the talent's wonderful. Star. Yeah, yeah, totally. She's such a star. I love. Yeah, I've I've dressed her. Oh, you have. And so you I know do, her. I do. She's very. You gotta get on that chair. Very show. kind. So sweet. So funny. What did funny. you dress her in? Um. Well, I'm. I was friends with Bob, the drag queen, mm-hmm. first through a friend of mine, um, and that's also a huge, huge component of my business. Uh, it comes from Drag Race. Really? Absolutely. So I, I dressed and painted a custom gown for Bob the drag queen the night he won. Which oh, one? My oh, God. the white one. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that was you. That's amazing. So. That night, he he posted a photo. Okay, this was season eight. I guess mm-hmm. we're on season 12 now, eight, nine, 10, 11. Jesus. So I, I remember I was working at a restaurant in Midtown or whatever, and my you keep your phone in this like cup where you mm-hmm. keep your receipts and your cash. <laughs> I don't know why I went back to Texas <laughs> thinking about working at the restaurants. But anyway, um, so I had my phone in a cup, and the manager was like, oh my God, Tyler, your phone is like, because the notifications pop Blowing up. up. She's like, they're like, going really fast and i was like oh something something's up like something happened someone shouted me out something and i was like hoping that bob the drag queen was going to tell people who painted the dress and whatnot and he said my name on the red carpet all night and then he posted and tagged me in something and i jumped like two or three thousand followers that night wow he had just, and yeah. then woke up and it had gone to like four or five thousand followers and then um Derek Barry contacted me because he like, and this is how it works with those girls. Like you just mm-hmm. get something cute on one of them and the rest are like. That's how it works with every right. with it's, every new client. It's like, you know, just that one yeah. shout out. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so important for artists to recognize other artists and give them these opportunities because like, look what happened for you. Who would have thought? Like you, Bob exactly. the Drag Queen wears one of your dresses and just gives you a shout out. And, and then- it's through a friend of mine who I knew who is a stylist and he's like, 
Bob, you need to meet Tyler. And so when I went to go meet Bob, uh, I gave him two t-shirts and like he sewed those t-shirts, boom, he deconstructed them and then reconstructed them into this like body suit mm. that he stoned and put all these He's stones so talented. over. Yeah, and so Bob introduced me to Monet and and then I like see Monet at some club wearing Bob's outfit. Oh they trade God. clothes. Yeah, totally. They all, mm -hmm. yeah, I think they all live out of like 30 big suitcases that they just pass off to each other or something. Yeah. Because you'll see Monet and some of Bob's hair. And so it. then, you know, I'm doing stuff in Brooklyn. I'm, I'm painting live at Metropolitan Bar as well. And then I meet Thorgy Thor because that's her home. Bite. That's like her home base bar, Metropolitan. So I kind of got to know Thorgy from queer bars around New York City in 2010 and 11 in Williamsburg, which are closed now, um, mm. sadly. But um, yeah, and, and I met a bunch of like more local queens. And then um, then you- You sing all that mess on um, RuPaul from last night. <laughs> oh no, what happened last night? Oh Carmen Carrera, uh -huh. she, you know how she can be a little um, extra. volatile and yes. extra. She, said, she called RuPaul the the Hitler of the LGBTQIA community. <laughs> that is so much. That is so much. I think that we could be more inclusive on Drag Race for sure, but my God, that is yeah. a huge stretch. Yes, I think that's inclusivity crazy. for Drag Race, sure, but that's yeah. also her show. I mean, it's like, you know. Kind of is what it is. Yeah. It's just like, you know, it's not a religion. Right. That I always want to tell people man. that. Like, Please just relax. Yeah. Like, it's a TV show and you don't have to watch it. It's like a sport. Yeah. I don't, you know, you don't yeah. have to, it's, it, yeah. it, <clears throat> it's gonna, you know. What do you think of the season 12 um, promo? I'm excited. I, I only, I know Britta Filter oh, from you do. Manhattan. Um, she's a really, an incredible Britta performer. Britta Filter, yeah. I know, right? It's great. Incredible performer. Um, I hope that they, I hope they do well. I can't help but, I mean, I've just been a fan since the beginning. Me too. So I've been watching it so long. I can't help but feel like I've seen it. Yeah, I, I'm with this, you on I've that. I've seen this. It's, it's all seems a little recycled. We'll see what really, you know, what you really got to bring. And also, I think the pushed a little, but what can you do? Well, it's becoming so 14 or something. I know it is. <laughs> it's it, like, of course, it's going to feel the same. It's becoming as it grows, it's becoming more shiny and it loses yeah. its um that that jankiness well, that I really love. <laughs> edge to drag that was so fantastic was like Tyra Sanchez literally gluing shit to her yeah. ears duct taping her skin like burning themselves to get on stage and look fabulous and now it's like it's like what'd you bring yeah what'd the you uk bring? uh last season of the uk was pretty good <laughs> this is great yeah, yeah oh my god they're so just a bit nasty we and want it messy yes. we want it nasty <laughs> we want it dirty mm -hmm. totally constantly talking about just knickers and yeah <laughs> bloody Bl just, you're my you're you minge you know yeah. I mean, just like you can't go an episode without mentioning of some <laughs> some British colloquialism about totally. genitalia. Uh, I it's love fantastic. It. Yeah, it's TV. I love it. Um, oh, I wanted to pull this out. Oh yes, I did a fantastic collaboration. With oh, what color? oh, it's it's, I love that. Oh, you know, the, green the green screens. Screen. Oh, the green yeah, screen. it's recognizing the yes. Kelly green. That's so funny. The queer creative podcast. <laughs> in the back that is so cool <laughs> yeah those are really cool um but yeah so uh, drag race has been a huge part um that's amazing. oh right why was drag race brought so, up <laughs> so bob wore my outfit oh, yes. and mm -hmm. then since then i've designed some stuff for thorgy thor she's worn my stuff so i gave her a bunch of t-shirts and then she gets booked on all stars two mm -hmm. three i don't i don't sorry thorgy thor yeah three so she wears my shirt in the workroom and I was like, more than anything, I was like, I didn't even catch that. I should have caught that. I was like, that. I really, really, really want to get, like, I've had multiple people wear me at, like, the reunion mm -hmm. show and whatnot. I was like, I want to be on, like, how do I, how do I, and then uh, she didn't even know she did. I was like, <gasps> oh. I said, Thorgy, oh, my God, thank you. Like, you <laughs> made my, and she's like, oh. What, what are you talking about? Why you, don't text me. Why are you texting me? <laughs> what? Don't text me. And I was just like, thank you. But she's like, oh, Tyler. Yeah. Um, she's like, oh, yeah. I guess I wore it. That's great. Just very like, oh, okay. I guess I reminded her. But, you know, to eat good. She's, you know, they're running their own little one-man band brand as well. You're All always wearing your, your brand, too. I do. I don't think I've ever seen you out of it. It's interesting because this year I had, I mean, I'm, I'm on film today. 
I'm working mm-hmm. today, so I'm wearing it. But I, it's become this identity crisis kind of thing for me lately because I, and I'm enjoying now not wearing it mm-hmm. and blending in. Yeah, but I feel like I'm like cheating. Che- <laughs> Totally. That makes mm-hmm, sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I get it. Myself. And also because like I want to go out. Um, I'm so, you know, whatever. I'm used to people staring at me. Like it may it it almost made me more uncomfortable that I was just another person. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe you're just wearing black like everyone else. <laughs> Does it Nothing affect your personality? Because it's I, almost like a drag persona, right? Absolutely. I don't feel any need whatsoever to turn anything on for who look at me i'm like we're we're all you know we're all blending in and like that's kind of like my i guess that's my message i send through clothing it's like if you i mean if you see me not wearing my own stuff don't like not say something to me i'm still gonna be personable and whatnot but maybe not so much so as if I were maybe expecting someone to be like, hey, that's really cool. Or like, yo, I like your shirt. Or man, where did you get that? Um, it, it's just like little comments like that, but it ha- it'll happen all day. Like mm-hmm. it'll happen all day to anybody who wears it. And that's like the number one thing they right. tell me. People would not stop talking. And I tell people. It's a conversation it's starter. It's a conversation starter. And like, you, if you wear this out, someone's going to say something to you about it. And then sure enough, they're like, yo, four people came up to me last night. Like, where did you <laughs> get that shirt? And like, I gave them all your Instagram. Like that's I amazing. hear that all the time. And it's so, it's so sweet and it's so endearing. And I think it's like something people find out when they wear the clothes, but it is a choice. Um, and it, I think it, it was a choice that I wasn't consciously making for so long and that maybe at some point I realized I was giving a little more of myself than I should. Mm. So I kind of pulled back from it and it felt nice, but I did feel like mm. <laughs> I was cheating. But I really do. I mean, I'm like I said, it's Tyler Wallach Studio. I'm Tyler Wallach. Like who else to wear the brand? Yeah. I'm yeah. the biggest brand ambassador there will ever be. Yeah. So. And it's something like your clothes, you have to wear them with pride. I would think if someone's going to come up to you and talk about it, like yeah. you better be prepared exactly. and be proud of wearing no, it. Like, and like, oh no, like I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I just I picked this it. up at like don't tell anyone. Nordstrom. Like, I, I yeah. designed it and I it out of my <laughs> studio. So tell anybody. Yeah. Well, we kind of dressed down today yeah, well, because we wanted enough. the colors to yeah. like pop and and like yeah. I mean, I'm also a biggest. I mean, I'm the biggest proponent of that. If you don't take yourself seriously, nobody else will. I keep I always have 10 business cards on me. I don't mm-hmm, care if it's old school. Mm-hmm. I will hand you a business card. I I try and I try and run out every day. I always oh, try and run out. That's a that's a good goal that actually. Is a good goal. I constantly I like that try a lot. And make sure to like run out and I'll just be like, "Hey, take my right. card find me on Instagram." I create an opportunity just to because, talk to someone. Just because coming from a place to where I've worked in restaurants um, you just have to appreciate every single sale and take it seriously and yeah. know that it might not come around again. So you really never know, like, don't underestimate yourself. Handing that business card to someone could be the one thing that someone was like, wow, this person makes things mm-hmm. and like has the the guts and gumption to like go out and do this. That's pretty cool. And he came up and gave me his card and then they check it out and then you made a sale and mm-hmm. then they can't wait for you to keep releasing things. Mm-hmm. Then they buy a painting and then they're here at your open studio. Yeah. That's kind of what happened with Daniel, who you guys have interviewed before. He's a friend of mine up in Harlem. He's an artist as well. I got to know him. I met him at an event. And then he bought a t-shirt. And then his husband wanted a t-shirt. And then his husband's sister's kids, he got mm-hmm. them three backpacks, three matching shirts, a sleep oh shirt God, for the grandma. That. And then just decked everybody ah! out. I want to see a grandma in your... Oh, my God. (laughs) So, I got my mom's a grandma now. Hey, Mimi. Um, She picked Mimi. Shout out to Mimi. I know. I tried... I wanted Gammy, but the other grandma got Gammy. My mom is Nani. 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 I I love that. I love it. So, yeah. It's... My my dad is Pappy. Oh, not (laughs) Poppy. Pappy. Pappy, Not Poppy. That's different. That's on Twitter. We'll save Mm -hmm. that for later. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no. Pappy. Pappy and Mimi. (laughs) Well, you know, out in Houston. So cute. Um, Yeah, I definitely want to see, like, I can see you collaborating with, like, other big fashion brands. Like, what are your goals? Yeah, I mean, I've done, I do custom painting on leather as well. I was the artist in residence at Barney's um, for fall one year, and they brought me in to consult. What does that entail? Yeah. Custom painting of, like, uh, 
the uh, the Birkin bag. I painted two different Birkin bags. What? There's a company called Rebag.com where they'll okay. sell very fancy, very high end leather bags that have been gently used. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did a five bag deal with them to where I custom painted oh. like whatever I wanted on five bags. And then they had like auctions for them. And um, yeah, I um, and so that actually came from this, uh, uh, I volunteer for the Trevor Project. I mm -hmm. had, I was a marketing chair with my friend, my roommate, oh, Braden wow. Bradley. He yeah. was head of marketing and I was like his little assistant oh, or whatever. Wow. I was helping with the silent auction mm -hmm. and uh, merchandising that up and whatnot and getting people to donate tickets to Broadway shows and stuff. So I sell a painting to this fabulous gay who's like, listen, later, many, many, like a year after he gets the painting, he's like, listen, I have a collection of Birkin bags, darling. This is how, what he sounded like? Yeah, okay. it's like a little like, smoked <laughs> out probably. It's an old school New Yorker diner. We'll meet you at this diner. Diner. Yeah, we're gonna go to the diner. Um, but anyway, so he's like, I have this collection of Birkin bags. He works at the the ground floor of Barney's and okay. uh, scents and uh, fragrance. 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 It's not colognes. Girl. No, they're taking their job seriously, <laughs> but I do too. So that's okay. You take it serious. <laughs> so anyway, he got this collection of bar, uh, Birkin bags, and he's like, I'm gonna bring one. I just want you to paint it. Do whatever you want. Just paint <sighs> it. Enjoy it. Feel it out. And like, he's like, but you know, don't get me wrong. It's twelve thousand dollar bag. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. So he gives me the bag. And two months later, I finally start, I get the courage. Like I was, right. I was probably in like, I had hives being around it the first month. I Cause was right. Like, Cause if you fuck up, like how do you bag. do way better? Right. I mean, well, there's, there's, I did a ton of leather painting research based oh. on what types of finishes bags mm -hmm. get to ward off water, dust, what have you. Yeah. Anyway, it's a whole process much like anything is like screen printing or anything else um to where you wear down the bag a little bit get your base coat going of any types of white that you need to do first do the brighter colors on top of that and then there's like a finishing process mm -hmm. as well uh it's very it's a very involved process but it is really fun i i really like painting those fancy bags because it's it's exciting to have such an expensive canvas and it's there they i i love bags i'm a bag for bags okay mm -hmm. i don't care i love bags i've always loved bags i've always wanted a purse you know <laughs> what are you gonna do so i think it's like so fun i really do consider them works of art already i think mm -hmm. that they're like so fancy i'm from texas i love the smell of leather mm -hmm. you know what are you gonna do so being at that floor in barney's next to all those bags just in like leather heaven um sorry to the oh, vegans but sorry, heaven, to the, honey. sorry to the vegans with those bags those Prada bags oh my god the Givenchy bags I mean I got to put my hands on some like Celine the softest leather I've ever found oh. in the world it's and yeah I've, I've painted on all the big brands um and it's also it's interesting because I feel like I've kind of like conquered something mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. know. putting putting my mark yeah it's, like, it's almost like my graffiti in a space, even though it's a private bag, yeah, private bag, but it's like a way to sort of show my thing on something that's, you know, so expensive. Yeah. And from a brand perspective, oh my God, Tyler Wallach Studio. Associated. With yeah, to Prada. be associated. Tyler Wallach Studio X Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. You know, Tyler Wallach Studio for Givenchy, whatever. It's like all of a sudden I have a pair of Louboutins in my hand and it's, oh yeah, this is, you know, he's an artist. He owns Tyler Wallach Studio. He's painting on these Louboutins. It's like, you're, I'm one sentence away from Louboutin. I can't <laughs> afford them. I can't afford them. But, I, you know, one day. Uh -huh. It's in my hands. We, we, what were you watching last night for like an hour, a video of Willem? Unboxing. Of Willem unboxing. I love when Willem does the shoe unboxing because he'll go to the Louboutin uh, sample sales in LA. There like brain dead staring at it's, I know. Willem opening Why? the shoe boxes. Why am that? It's like right, like what am I doing with my life? Makeup tutorials. Yeah. Yes. I don't. I don't. Never gonna. I don't want to wear. But the makeup. the leopard print little little bag, the little um. Oh, like that's a whole bag. series. He oh, has a ton so of them. Yeah, I love it. Have Those you ever done any um like graffiti? Yeah, like wall mm. art for outside or. I did a mural for Brooklyn Brewery recently for Pride this oh, year, cool. and then um, I used to do some street art, but there's really no room for it in New York City anymore. And, uh, mm. I mean, you can do it like with permission in Dumbo or with permission okay. in Bushwick. Yeah. Sure, because there's like the Bushwick Art Collective where you can paint the metal grates that are in front mm -hmm. of... Um, or like an event or something. Yeah. yeah. But really, there's, you know, there's no like great walls 
to be painted anymore in the city mm-hmm. where you won't get caught with it. Yeah. Yeah, your stuff you're is very, feet. it's very like, there's in an fall. 80s sort of uh, <laughs> yeah. feel to it too of, mm-hmm. of graffiti art. Yeah, 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 totally. I'm greatly inspired by uh, New York graffiti in the 70s. It was like the explosion of it, you know, covering entire subway cars. I was just going to say, I could see your work covering mm-hmm. an entire subway car. And it was like that direct inspiration of all those early artists who tried to, in a, you know, for lack of a better term, would be like, take back the streets. You know, if if New York is going to be over commercialized, which it is and always has been just because of its density. But like, if you're going to over commercialize it, then why not allow people to just put up, I mean, in my Mm -hmm. harmless art, I mean, it is on a subway car, but still. can I ask yeah. you a question about your production and manufacturing yeah. um, and, and sort of inventory? Sure. How do you manage that? Like, because it, it, it must so, be, so do you do? Yeah. Do you go, oh, it's changed. Yeah. Can you just talk about time. it? Like, and in, in yeah. do, do you keep it uh, so in the on beginning, hand or is it made to I order? Did, I did in the beginning. I would buy stock. Now I do not. I do okay. a pre-sale method okay. now, um, which saves me the stress of like not being able to guess whether something's going to sell or not. Mm-hmm. So... You can always kind of preview something and buy maybe like 12 of them and be, I'm pretty confident I can sell 12 of anything, Mm -hmm. but you just don't know if you're going to need to have bought 25 or 50 or sometimes just 12. Like it'll be just the first, you know, like I bought like 30 of a bag and I sold 15 of them very quickly. And I was like, oh my gosh, this bag. (laughs) So I ordered like 30 more. Well, I only sold those 15. Okay. And yeah. I like can't move the rest. Interestingly enough, the same thing happened to me with backpacks before. And I don't, backpacks mm-hmm. are so seasonal. It's probably easier with t-shirts, right? Much, yeah. much, much. And um, yeah, so with the t-shirts, I used to just have like a generic unisex stock. And, but like when you're, it's a, the problem comes when you're sitting on the stock for too long. You're like, mm-hmm. what do I do with it? It's like my frustration when I came to theater auditioning using the same song i'm like oh my god i don't see this song anymore like you guys and like i don't see the design anymore right like you guys see it it's just like um so you have to have you just get sick of looking at it and then i'm like i'm giving this away i'm mm-hmm. just gonna start ki- yeah and then i'm like oh my god why did i get i gave away you right. know because like i bought too many and then at this point i'm like i can't i don't want to look at this anymore it's like the sale racket forever 21 honey i'm like take it <laughs> steal it please just steal it so I, it's tricky and so now what i'll do is i'll put something out there and i'll say okay everybody you've got three weeks to put in your orders I'm gonna do two rounds of pre-sale. You, mm-hmm. And I'm just gonna blast, blast, blast for three weeks. Everybody who's ordered in this period, I'm placing the order on the first. I will get it on the 15th. I'm gonna go through, make sure everything's legit, give you your free stickers, give you your, you know, the stationery that I give out. And mm-hmm. my I do a handwritten note with every single order I've ever had purchased. And that's a sweet touch. That. Yes. And um just like y'all got your fancy cards. Yes. I yes, know. I got some cards too. Okay. Oh, those are nice. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah. And to give it that little uh, personal touch. And mm-hmm. so then I'll get it all in. And then I will ship it all out on the 16th. And then you'll hopefully like have it on the 20th. Now, the only problem with that is that we live in a culture now of Amazon Prime. Yeah. yeah everyone's like, I'm, I want it now. They mm-hmm. want it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Like it's and I just don't have sympathy for those people anymore. I just like can't cater to everybody. And like, I understand that people want things quickly now because that's the culture that we live in. But, you know, waiting three weeks for something is not. Yeah. Also, something that's biggest. super specific, Especially, like your, like yeah, your stuff. You're buying art. I mean, yeah. like, essentially, you're supporting an artist. Absolutely. And yeah. it's uh, and it is like printed and sewn and then sent to me for inspection so it's like there's a you know there's a process to it i was surprised when you said that you would put in the order on the first and get it on the 15th that's a pretty big turnaround yeah fast china man those factories the (laughs) team i work with is great god bless those um, little children (laughs) i hope not oh god you know interesting enough i said i said i want to go i want to go and see the factory they said no (laughs) yeah no they're not gonna let you over there I have stuff no. manufactured in Nepal and will, China as well. No one. Oh yeah. No. And I then tried to do the same. I watch. I want. I would have gone. Yeah, I me too. To see it. Yes. I want to feel it. Why not? Right. So interesting. And enough. also in that too, when you have to, get, when you're able to go to the factory and see the manufacturing process, you can come up with ideas to exactly. better improve. Exactly. I can be like, oh my god, we totally now. I see you can cut out an inch here, and it would be, you know, no one would think or like get rid of the seam or something, you know, or even like, get a better understanding not. of like 
uh, you could see something else they're working on and you'd be like, oh, that's wonderful. Like, why don't we do that without my stuff? I think the thing is you just never know what else is going on at those factories. Oh, yeah. Because they're making they're fake Chanel lipsticks, and not fake Chanel and lipsticks and in the other room just... and the uh, fake Kylie lip kits. <laughs> I'm watching this new show on Netflix called Broken and it's just about oh, yeah, broken our society. It's girl. so bad. And they tell you about that. Ugh, that I makeup can't that'll watch. make your eye like bleed. Like literally, <laughs> like they used super glue in a yes. fake Kylie lip kit and the girl glued her lips together. Shut. I know. I saw this episode. It was horrifying. Oh, and oh they, they were raiding the LA downtown. Santi Alley. Yes, Santi Alley for all of these like fake bootleg uh, makeups oh like God. Kylie kits. The cosmetic, God. the bootleg cosmetic company is causing problems because they'll put like dirt and manure and like clay potting materials and you think it's a porcelain white. Oh my <laughs> no, God. No, baby. That's <laughs> yes. clay. Glass. That's glass. glass. That's cocaine glass. from Beijing. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> you wish. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so as far as stock goes, um, you know, if you get a good deal, buy a bunch of something um and like hopefully you'll sell it mm -hmm. but sitting on stuff too long can be a gamble mm -hmm. but the pre-sale method has been great and that's honestly what lots of brands do now and what are you doing it on just a, a social media push yeah i'll i'll push as hard as i can um and then of course like i'll try and you know if i'm really working on targeting towards like sales or website or i try and get specific and then try and like get other people to like retweet something or i'll make sure to get ahead of a product and gift it and make sure to have like photos in advance already mm. of you know someone carrying it or right. try and have something to go along with right. so do you have a storage unit in brooklyn that you use no not right no, it's now here. this is it yeah okay. everything i have right now is here now there's been times where my rack has been like overflowing it's like mm -hmm. i have yeah. shirts on the top and the bottom i'm in a place right mm -hmm. now to where i've been pushing to get rid of mm -hmm. everything yeah because i just have the it's idea new that year less is more. And, yeah but because i have done more is more for 10 years and i want to focus my work now um I, of course i still want to keep doing you know t-shirts and pride gear and fun types of clothing but i want to do more large-scale custom paintings mm -hmm. i mean like any artist should i've just i've had a lot of fun doing the clothes and it really does extend the life of the work and it's really exciting to see it out and about where people have taken it yeah, and traveled with out. it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, it's great, but I, there is like, I want to kind of come back to the source of it and do some more interesting work on canvas um, and like see where that leads me. And that may lead to like more clothing creations in the future, but I just did like a bomber jacket thing and some t-shirts and stuff and like come around pride time. I'm going to re-release the two pride shirts I've done before. I don't cool. think I'll do another one this coming year. I think I'm just going to like focus on the two that I've done before because I had a really fantastic meeting already. This is the earliest yeah. meeting for pride I've ever had. Um, it's, I mean, yeah, why not? It's with Saks. And so we're going to be planning on coming up with something to work on for Pride this year. And um, I don't How'd know. How did you get that meeting? Uh, so I work a lot with this charity organization called Red. Okay. And they work by partnering with brands to raise money to combat AIDS in Africa. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that. the Red brand did the huge big activation. I think it was like early 2000s or late 90s with Gap. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that's how I remember it. Yeah. Um, but you know, now they I have them with the iPhone. Exactly. So you have the red iPhone, which I do. I have the red iPhone as well. They do uh, all sorts of different products across the board and a percentage of each piece of sales. So they're, um, I think it's the director of their communications. They brought me to uh, South by Southwest with Volcom, the skateboard company. How nice. Oh, yeah. I love Volcom. Right? When I was growing up. Oh my God. <laughs> well, the, the guys that work there are hot too. So yeah. watch out. <laughs> yeah. Skater boy. So, yeah, it is. Oh, and they're so chill. They're not even like LA chill. chill they're, and like, buff. they're like Hermosa Beach chill. They're like, yeah. hey, like we're not, we're not like LA. No, like have you ever been to the Palisades or something like that? Like, I don't even know where they were from, whatever. They were so chill. Cause like I'm a little, I'm an anxious type person. So I'm like, and it comes from theater. I think like you show up 20 mm -hmm. minutes early like stretch and mm -hmm. warm up like you just want to get a lay of the land before you're gonna like do your audition or whatnot these guys just roll oh up. my lord late late, late. yeah coffee just like mellowed out those boxer briefs poking out mm. just a mess but i loved it it made like me that. feel so much more i was like oh shh. 
<laughs> yeah. It's like, I stressed <laughs> enough to get this job done yesterday. Like, I can't believe I could just get to come in here and chill. So anyway, they bring me to South by Southwest and I paint a mural live while nice. these bands are performing next to me over the course of three days for a female empowerment weekend okay. that we had. Um, and it was put together through Red, Salesforce, and Okay. Welcome. Salesforce is a huge yeah. reckon, forced to be reckoned. Yeah. They're amazing. And um, so anyway, the girl that works at Red is like, oh my God, Tyler, my friend Emma, she does PR for Sax. You're gonna you're gonna die, you're gonna love her. <laughs> hit it off. And I was like, oh, it's gonna be like that. She's like, you're just gonna walk in and like it's gonna it's gonna be over. Like that's amazing. Like, Do it. And I was like, okay, let me go meet Miss Emma and Miss Ashley. And I did, and of course, I was like, oh, of course she knew. Julia knew we were gonna hit it off. And we did, and um I just kind of described to them what I've described with y'all today, just what I do and how I can do it and in what capacity. And I'm very malleable and mm -hmm. like I'm on my email as well, which I think so many people appreciate. Yes. I'll tell you, if I can give any advice, which I usually don't like to, but um, just, oh my gosh, it still comes back to taking yourself seriously. Mm -hmm. So many people tell me, they're like, it is so refreshing to work with you. And I just think, oh my God, these artists out there just must be terrible. They take them, yeah. they like, they take themselves too seriously almost. It's like they, they're, they're, I think they're bitchy sometimes. I think they're rude. I don't know if they're like on top of their email. Yeah. I think there's a lot of insecurity too and a lot yes. of like lack of social skill in the yes. business. And professionalism. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And like but if like, you don't want to deal with the admin stuff too. when you're starting yeah. out in your they don't know. Business. They don't know. But better, like I'm a yeah. theater person, so like yeah. I am I am hyper aware of mm -hmm. the situation that's happening in a room even before I get into it because you already want to know who's behind the table. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm already, I'm in front of shit. Like I'm way in you front of the it. players are. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a big game out there. And like, I just don't think that, um, you know, other artists aren't taking it as, as seriously. So literally every brand I work with is like, you're just so personable and you know, you're able to talk about your on-brand messaging. And like, I, but I mean, I also come from a PR um, background where I worked for a year as a personal assistant for a boutique PR firm where we did um, communications for visual arts, architecture, and design. Oh, so okay. that's been helpful. I got a yeah. hand in like working for the Gagosian Gallery, which is like the largest worldwide gallery that we have, I think, in Manhattan right now. And they do these, you know, crazy large scale art shows with Takashi Murakami. And, you know, then we're also working with other people in this PR sphere um, pro bono for visual aids, which mm -hmm. is an organization where they're also raising money to combat AIDS here in yeah. America through honoring, you know, artists with AIDS and other queer artists. Um, yeah. It's just, it's, it's interesting what I've learned along the way and like how the, I mean, like anything, the business is a beast. It, it just always will be. Um, and it's like finding your way, sort of in between the two, but just still trying to enjoy it. But um, yeah, take yourself seriously and respond to emails and do your research. Know, know about their brand because they're going to look you up. You look them up. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of like common sense. Mm -hmm. but, but I tell you time and time again, I realize like just go in there and be yourself because you're the type of person that they want to work with. Right. And that's even that comes down to theater. Sometimes you're not going to be the most talented one in the room every time. And the girl who is the most talented will not always get the part. It right, comes down right. to them wanting to work with you and being someone that it's like, do we want to try and keep up with this person? Do we want to, you know, do we want to pay this person? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the goal. You got to, you know, there's lots and lots and lots of jobs and opportunities that you'll have for exposure <laughs> and just like, oh, we're going to feature you on yeah, yeah, Instagram, yeah. on our page. We have like oh, so many followers. You're going to, you should be paying us really. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. it's like, you're going to be cornered in so many situations. And I don't regret anything I did for free. I did a lot of stuff for free that yeah, has come back around. we've all been there. Yeah. It has come back around and been a blessing. Yeah. There are things that I've done for free where, you know, I've either shown up somewhere, painted for free or donated for free. And a, the lawyer who bid on one of my paintings that I donated now represents me pro bono. Oh, and I got wow. ripped off by a huge brand and he sent the cease and desist. It's just like, wow. yeah, he bought the painting and he's like, do you have anyone like helping you out if you ever get into any 
copyright trouble. <laughs> he's like, we work. I mean, That's... he's like, I work for Facebook and YouTube. Like, we're the we're the we're the firm that like represents like some of their intellectual property and like right. in a huge huge capacity. So he's like, I can get you a meeting like with one of our lawyers or whatever. Like, we'll represent you pro bono. Uh, and I'm like, oh, that's wonderful. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I go and meet with them and she's like, like, what round is your first investment at? Like how many tiers? And like, did you start at <laughs> 1 million or whatever? And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> no one told you about me. I was like, oh no, 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 no. I was like, maybe one day we'll think of the investment tier. At, <laughs> like we'll start it at 1.5, 1.7. Yeah, like yeah, really yeah. chill. She blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, no, I, I, I think I max out at sales at this point. <laughs> It's you know it's gotten better and better, but I think I was like I did like twenty thousand mm-hmm. maybe in sales or something for the year. I was I was still had a part time like, Can job. you still help me? And she, like, <laughs> she kind of had this look on her face like Why are you sitting in front of me right <laughs> now? This is so strange. That's great that you were honest. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I was think like, I would have lied. I was like, girl, you would have lied. I yeah, you would have lied. I think I would have lied. I think sixteen. Yeah, one point six, lady. One point six. Who do you think I am? <laughs> Can I see a different lawyer? Anyway, she quit. And they were like, oh, your lawyer quit. And I was like, that's okay. Um, just, you know, if something pops up, you'll figure it. We'll figure it out. And then something did pop up. But they had my back. It was great. It was great. So, that is great. You know, and that came through doing something for free. Yeah. So you never know. I've gotten a lot right. of work for doing something. And as you get more experience, you can be more, much more selective about what you do for Very free true. and what Absolutely. you spend your time on. Them. Because yeah. I think some people are like, oh, don't ever do anything for free. Like, that's disrespectful to yourself. Like, you need to have, you know, you need to you need to take enough love in what you're doing to like never do it for free but that's not the real world that's not reality this has been going on since time it's like people don't understand you don't get paid to do the super bowl you don't get paid for halftime i mean i feel like all creatives at some point are making work and putting work out there and that they're not getting paid for it's just it's interesting yeah you have to build a portfolio yeah and sometimes that's because you gave away a Mm -hmm. t-shirt i never understood that argument where it's like uh no you need to know your value and nobody no artist should be working for free and i'll like it seems to be in in sure like i i sort of see the point but Mm -hmm. at the same time you it, there are opportunities out there that are going to come up about that mm-hmm. will lead to future work. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it would be a mistake to just say across the board, don't do anything for free. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of those opportunities are yeah. great. Is so this... we've got Pride coming up yeah. with Saks collaboration. Uh, yeah. We will look out for that yeah. in June. Um, did you, is this a print? I saw that you had a printed... Um, jewelry line is that what i'm looking at here Uh, yeah so i did i had a there was a factory in china that my friend was working on jewelry design and i was like hey is it is it possible that you could take one of my paintings or a character or something and she mocked it up and had it printed 3d printing yeah Yeah, it's like acrylic yeah Mm -hmm. and we had five of them made in all these colors but i went back to order more and they shut the factory down did they do well (laughs) <laughs> no, I only had I only ever had five made. So I really do want to get into it. Because they're very jewelry. cool. Yeah, I want to get Have into a Have you heard cool of um, Taddy thing. Divine? You would love them. You should check them out. They're oh. this British like plastic. Oh, cool. Jewelry like big bold like rainbows. Oh, I and, love that. Um you would like them. I that think sounds, check out their Instagram. That's cool. Mm-hmm. What are they called again? Taddy Divine. Taddy Divine. I'll check it out. Yeah. Taddy. Uh, But yeah, I did that. The 3D printed acrylic jewelry was really cool and something that I would definitely like to do again as I really want to avoid things that are a size. Like Mm -hmm. I love bags now. Bags are great. You love a necklace. Like things that are a size require so much work and Mm -hmm. returns and the possibility that it will not fit, which through the mail is... It is what it is, yeah. but it just is a lengthy process of back and forth yep. sometimes with people if they're very picky. And some people are very picky. I'm not. What about I'll buy stuff rings? Without trying rings it on. would be cool. I could see you doing rings, like big, bold, colorful. It. Yeah. It's like, look at your ring. No. <laughs> yep. It's just prints. Tattoo. Just prints. Yeah, her prints. That's new. Really? That's she like just got a tattoo. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Her prince tattoo. <laughs> I want to get a tattoo of my work. People have. You don't have one. People have. Sad. My Did friend you get Taylor. it in black line or color? I, I think I have to do color. Really? 